what's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel so today i know you've seen the thumbnail and um i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you all the reason that i did that thumbnail so i was going through some comments and stuff and somebody you know you always got that one person man so why should anybody listen to you <laughs> who is you <laughs> you ain't gotta listen to me man i really don't care one way or another but it was a good question i didn't really answer but i figured be a good time to make a video now i've intimated um or alluded to you know my experience or some of the things that i've been involved in as far as just like business and what i did for a job as of right now i'm a full-time reseller i've been doing it for two years now so i left my job two almost two years ago now so let's get into this so why should you not listen to me you should not listen to me <laughs> if you don't want to be successful <laughs> But why should you, or at least, why should you at least consider some of the things? I'm not saying like I know everything and everything I say is just like the truth because it's not, right? We all learn, every day is a learning process and every day I'm learning. Some things that I think today are great, tomorrow might not be so great and I might change it up, right? However, if you've noticed in a lot of my videos, yeah, I'll do some videos where I'll show you items and things like that, but I also kind of focus on content that's about business and just kind of you know trying to add more of a business educational aspect to some of my videos i know it's not as exciting as going out and thrifting and things like that but i think it it allows you to build a more solid foundation and thrifting videos and unboxing videos and things like that are fun you know i don't mind doing them here and there but that's not what's going to um help you last in this business that's not what's going to help you last is knowledge and education okay and like i said i've alluded to some um you know what i used to do for a living but i'm just going to go through the whole thing kind of a summary before reselling i was in restaurants okay i was a restaurant manager probably i was in restaurants for about 10 11 years okay went all the way from working on the line to being a trainer to being a manager to being general manager of three different national brand restaurants all right I worked at a Steak and Shake, um, Dunkin' Donuts, and my last place was Chuck E. Cheese. Every last one of those places, I was a general manager at some point. All my stores, well, except for the Dunkin' Donuts, but the other stores are all about $2 million stores. Um, Steak and Shake was my longest tenure. You know, yeah, it might have been longest. I was, at, I was at Chuck E. Cheese for about five or six years, too. I probably was at Steak and Shake longer. So I had I had left Steak and Shake for a couple years, but I transferred the company I worked for was a local company who owned franchises. So I had transferred from the Steak and Shake to the Dunkin' Donuts. And then ended up running 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 one of their Dunkin' Donuts. And then at some point I just couldn't deal with my district manager. And so I left and went back to Steak and Shake. Uh and then eventually I became the GM at Steak and Shake when that GM left. Stayed there for a few more years and then I ended up going to um, Chuck E. Cheese. But when I went to Chuck E. Cheese, I only went there as just a manager. And then I ended up becoming a GM after my GM ended up leaving. You know, and like I said, these stores, these were like $2 million stores. So as far as my experience goes, and when I talk about business things and things like that, not only, and, and look, I didn't go to school for a hotel and restaurant management or nothing like that, right? I just, I'm not dumb, number one. But number two, I, I've always been just into learning, right? So I would just learn. I learn, whether it be YouTube or reading books or whatever it may be. So, and plus, I'm there. I'm in the environment. I understand the environment. Some of those restaurants had good training programs. Some of them really didn't, right? Some of my DMs, they were good at working with you. The one that I had at Duncan really wasn't, which is why I left. She was very disrespectful and I just wasn't going for that. So like I said, these were like $2 million stores except for the Dunkin' Donuts. That was only, that only did like probably about 500,000. It was a small one. Um, the staff I had under me, the most staff I had was at the Steak and Shake. So I would have been managing uh, three managers, three salary managers, probably a couple trainers, a few trainers, and then staff, staffing levels can have been anywhere from 30 something to 50, 60 people at any given time, depending on how busy the year was too. You know what I mean? Um, for a while we weren't third shift. 
then when we went to third shift that kind of changed things but and as far as steak and shake was a whole different type of like beast man it's like i don't know if any of y'all listening has ever worked at a steak and shake or managed at a steak and shake you know that the struggle was real with them the one thing about steak and shake is this it was really busy the food was good the price was right the problem is that their systems are not geared toward keeping up with the amount of business and volume that you can get man i'm talking about that shit used to get so crazy <laughs> and shakes they want, they want you to make shakes by hand frozen shake base that you take right out the freezer hard as a rock man i'm big and i'm strong and they used to be hard for me to get it and you got to keep up with a drive through in-house it, it was just it would get it would get so it was <laughs> i remember this one time right i had this guy man he had just started it was a real busy day but we had call offs uh it was crazy right so he hadn't been there that long and he was on shakes we hired him to do shakes right so the shake screen would be this is how shake screen would go you could be on there it would go from five or ten shakes then <laughs> you ended up man look you'll probably it'd be so many shakes on the screen you you end up with 40 45 minute times man it'll get out of hand real quick on shakes real quick because it was so hard to get the shake base so we used to let it sit out and try to soften up our dms never liked us doing that but man like just practically anyway this dude was stuck over there right and then i would i was trying to like go station to station help people then you know we managing like you got to deal with the complaints or just deal with the bull crap right so like he stopped and he was just like man and he just broke down and started crying he's like i just can't they just keep coming and they just i'm just like oh my goodness <laughs> uh so like being a manager this is the one thing i learned because there was a few instances in this particular environment but this wasn't the last time right and this is one of the reasons why people like me yeah i could be hard to get along with sometimes because like i was kind of like i wanted things the way i wanted them right but i also wasn't i was flexible and i was you could talk to me too right i might get on you but i'll come back to you and i'll talk to you and i'll explain things right but like he broke down he literally like i'm talking about a grown man literally broke down and started crying on shakes man and i finally got a chance to get over there and help him i was just like look just do one shake at a time <laughs> just one shake at a time bro <laughs> that's all you don't worry about nothing else <laughs> hey and that's not the first time i saw a grown man i'll say this i've never seen a woman break down and cry there was some females that walked out on us though I never seen a woman there break down and cry. I seen two dudes break down and cry. The other guy was a server. And this was a morning. It was just like me. It was me, a cook, and the two servers, right? Sunday morning. Sunday mornings was notoriously bad, man. Call offs. It would get, get, ah, Sunday mornings was bad. You talking about anxiety. Anyway, it was me and the cook on the back line. Um, we had the call offs, usual bull crap, right? Two servers. Um, and it, it got crazy. It got crazy. I'm trying to help the cook in the back. We got drive through orders. Now we ain't supposed to shut down the drive through and I had, there was always managers that would do it right. I would never shut down the drive through even though I had always thought about it sometimes when it got super crazy. So I would tell them in drive through like, look, I, I, I lied to him. I'd be like, look, our uh, register's down. You got to come in. My hope was that they went. They'd just be like, all right, never mind. And keep going. <laughs> but no. They, all right, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Pull right around and come like, damn. So, like, it's just people pouring in, dude. Two of us on the back line. And breakfast was hard because there's just so many components to it, right? You got the two servers out front. So, the one server, her name's Jody. She's like, eh. You need to come out here because such and such is out here crying. I'm like, oh, he's kidding me right now. So I had to call him in the back, right? I'm like, come here, man. He's like, come on, man. You just, you just gotta lock the doors. It's just, it's just crazy. And I just can't. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> that just is crazy. So I'm thinking like, this, I can't afford this dude to leave, right? Because it's gonna really be bad. So uh, I'm like, look, I can't remember his name either. But I'm like, look, man. All you got to do, I just want you to go out there, just go to the table, take the order, put the order in. Don't worry about nothing else. If they ask you questions about the food, just tell them it's coming. Like if you got to give them something extra, right? Just any extra food or whatever, 
that we already got made. Ask them do they want something extra, give them some free coffee, just do whatever, but don't you worry about nothing else. You just take care of them, give them something extra to keep them occupied, just go table to table, do it that way. He finally wiped his eyes off and shit. <laughs> Went back out there and he was cool and he stuck around for a few more months after that, man. So I was able to, but like, that ain't the first crazy situation I had to deal with there. Like I had customers that, that same day, actually, I had to end up going from the back line. Once people started coming in and managers came in, I had to end up going out there and serving out front because we didn't have enough servers like to cover the sections. So I ended up having to take a section, but like, this is like the type of stressful situation that you would be under and it wasn't every single day it wasn't but it, it was it was enough man um yeah it was enough but it taught me a lot it taught me a lot just about people oh yeah i had to break up a fight like a lady jumped up literally jumped up um was gonna fight one of my servers dude i had i had a whole tray like this with like there was covered with shakes i literally had to shimmy in between and this lady came in with like all these bodybuilders i don't even know where they came from <laughs> it was crazy and the girl was one of our best servers her name was sheree one of our best servers a1 man she she used to kill it out there right she was just like and I'm, I'm telling you i'm about to i'm just like oh man this ain't the time for this this was just like one of them crazy saturdays there was like buses coming the drive through line was wrapped around the building inside was packed so this lady jumped up and they arguing and shit. So I, I got the shakes in my hand. I, man, I just like literally had to shimmy in between them. I'm like, oh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> oh man, I, had, I told Sheree, I said, look, go ahead, man. Go do another table, I got this. I had to end up taking the table from her. Um, not like taking it, you know, but like taking it. I'm like, look, I let the lady talk, right? Because the lady ended up getting out her seat and then coming back and confronting Sheree again at the service station. So I'm just like, look, no, nah, we ain't going to do this. Right. We ain't going to do this. Um, and they used to always come and get me because I wasn't scared to go out there and like I can handle a guest and be nice. But I could also like be firm. You know what I mean? I'm a big guy, too. So that probably has something to do with it. But like I can be firm. Like, look, we ain't going to be disrespectful. You ain't going to be talking anyway. Like I would take up for my employees. If they was if they was not in the wrong, like if they did something wrong, that's one thing. But you ain't just gonna come in here disrespecting my employees. We ain't doing that. But I'm gonna do it in a nice professional way. So I took over the table, and by the time they left, they was happy, man. They was happy. I took care of it. That was just one example. But like it was a busy store, but we did good there. You know what I mean? But like it was more about you have to be a leader. And so I like you know, so I had to manage the people, I had to manage the managers, to manage the store keep revenue flowing, manage inventory, and just like customer service, you know? And that's just steak and shake. Uh, Dunkin' wasn't that hard. Chuck E. Cheese has its challenges because there's so many components and technically they're supposed to be a manager for every area because you got like the kitchen, cash, showroom, game room, and they got all this other stuff going on. But, you know, so it wasn't as crazy as steak and shake. Plus you ain't gotta worry about drive through and making shakes with frozen shake base and all that other crazy crap. But, um. This the systems at Steak and Shake, if they could improve the systems, that would be so much better because it's just uh, for the amount of business you get and the way that you got to do everything and put everything together, it's just bad. Anyway, manager for 10 years, the general manager running those restaurants at a pretty high level. So like, I know, I understand customer service. I understand like guest recovery. Like when, when you mess up, and you really got to go out here and fix it and you got to make this person happy. You got to talk to somebody who's pissed off pissed off and calm them down right and fix it or you got to deal with employees you got to deal with the call-offs you got to deal with the bad employees you got to keep the good employees happy because they pissed off about the bad employees you got to you know you might have an employee break down because of the pressure or the stress of the situation and you got to be able to like get them all calm and collected and be able to get them to go back out there and perform right you only do that when you can be a leader and so like that experience is what I've been able to translate over into reselling. Now it's nothing customer service and reselling ain't nothing compared to that restaurant stuff, man. But there's still an element of it that's the same, right? I was almost always in charge of inventory when I was at the restaurants as well. Um, always counting it, making the orders, doing everything besides being a GM and just running the whole store, understanding P and L's, reading P and L's, understanding my numbers. I'm one of them people, I never liked math in school, 
and I definitely don't like the algebra, geometry type of math, but business math, I really love business math. So I love numbers in that aspect, right? I love those type of numbers. So I, I, I like to know my numbers and that, you know, that cerebral, cerebral aspect of it. I started reselling back in probably 2015. I had my eBay account since 2012, I think, but like I, re and, I and I did a little dabbling, but I didn't really do nothing serious. I started doing it for a minute in 2015, but this was while I was still in the restaurant. So I really wasn't super serious. I was just kind of making some extra money doing that type of stuff, right? Then for a couple of years, I kind of stopped this, you know, restaurant stuff. I was the GM. Like, I, I, man, it was crazy, right? So I had to focus on that. Plus, I had my family. We having kids and stuff like that. So I really wasn't, like, tripping on, like, reselling or trying to focus on it. But then I got into vending. And if you go back into some of my earlier videos on this channel, you see I got some vending videos. I actually got up to about 150 locations. And I was starting to get into the crane machines, the mini crane machines. But then, boom, COVID happened, right? All that stuff happened. Everything shut down. And so I'm like, man, and I'm still in the restaurants and stuff, but then I'm like, all right, you know, what else can I do? So then I'm like, you know, let me start selling back on eBay and stuff. So then boom, I got back into reselling. And then I just realized like how much I loved it. I guess this goes back to like when I was young, you know, when I was young, me and my brothers and them, like we would always like, we was entrepreneurs, man. We was the guy, we was the kids that was selling other kids in the neighborhood candy bars or icy cups. Um, we would go buy a bunch of candy and sell them penny candy or we would we would make slingshots out of hangers and rubber bands and sell kids the uh, slingshots. <laughs> uh, and then when they broke, they'd bring them to us and we'd charge them an extra quarter and 50 cent to fix it. Right. Like, I mean, that's just how we was. And so I always liked selling things. So I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna stick with this. I ended up getting rid of my locations, my vending locations and selling that stuff off. And then I focused on this. Now, when the pandemic and all that stuff happened. You know, the government's giving us all this money. Unlike a lot of people, I wasn't spending my money because my ultimate goal was to work for myself. Right. That's my ultimate. Because honestly, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I really hate taking orders from other people, especially when a lot of times I feel like I'm smarter than them. You know what I mean? Like what the like, why would I do that? But like when you're working for corporate, a lot of times you ain't got no choice. Right. Because then they, you get your district manager. Just it's just like, all right, whatever, man, we'll do it this way. But this don't work. Like this do not work, but they want you to keep bumping your head on the wall. But anyway, um, I was saving up all my money. So I basically saved up a year's worth of salary. Right. Um, I was able to get a PPP loan because I had been in business with the vending business. It was the LLC. So that was all legit. I got that. All them little extra checks they was giving us. I just saved it all, man. Saved up a year's worth of salary. And then I'm just like, whatever, I'm about to just go ahead and pull the trigger and do it. And that's what I've been doing. And it hasn't been like perfectly easy. Like every, it's been some up and downs, but like I've been able to make that happen and focus on what's important. And I'm still learning. It's a process, right? It's a process. And so I can get into all that as far as like, if you thinking about leaving your job, like how you should do that, the, the pros and cons, how you could be ready for it. My thing is to have a year's worth of salary saved up. That way it doesn't matter what happens in that year. You should be good, right? And if you can pay yourself every year, a year's worth of salary, just so you ain't got to worry about the ups and downs of the business. If, it, if you, if you had some bad months, like you don't want to be living check to check and reselling. You don't want to be doing that. All right. But anyway, so my business experience is pretty extensive, right? And I've been doing things at a pretty high level and so that 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 doesn't change when you come over to reselling, understanding your numbers, understanding customer service, right? Um, dealing with vendors, sourcing, like there's different things you got to learn. Yeah, don't get me wrong. And it's a whole nother type of challenge, right? You working for these restaurants there. They already got everything in place for you. So you just kind of come in and you follow their rules and things like that and their procedures. So but for this, like you got to make up your own stuff. You got to come up with your own procedures, your own systems and things like that. So there is some challenges that's different, but you know, you kind of like, you can do it, especially if you got that type of experience. I mean, I'm not saying if you don't have business experience, you can't be a successful reseller. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying like an answer to that person's questions as far as like, why should somebody listen to me? Oh, you know, why should you not listen to me? Right? 
you don't have to. I'm not, I don't know it all, right? I'm just saying, but I know a lot. And I know a lot about business. I know a lot about running businesses. I ran businesses that did millions of dollars in revenue. I managed people, like lots of people. I managed other managers. I was a leader in my industry. And so I did it for a long time at a very high level and I was successful at it. And as of right now, I'm successful at what I'm doing at being a full-time reseller. Like, and I'm not going back. And this ain't the only thing I want to do for the rest of my life. I love selling, but I don't necessarily want to do this. Like I'm looking, like I'm plotting other things ahead, right? Real estate and some other things that I want to get involved in. So it ain't just reselling. But the business aspect of it, that's why you'll hear me talk about these things a lot more. Systems, because I read these books or I've done it, right? I got experience dealing with stuff. The efficient systems and inefficient systems. I got experience dealing with customers that are pissed off and I got to fix it. I got experience at a higher level dealing with corporate and, and, and just inventory and everything, man. Just a lot of stuff goes into it. You know what I mean? And so being able, like when you see my videos and you see me talking about how I set up everything um, to be more efficient, and there's always room for improvement, of course, right? Or anything like that, or just when I talk about business principles and I think you can learn something, I think, you know what I mean? And it's not anything brand new, like nobody else has ever spoken about it, but I feel like a lot of reselling content is good content and it's entertaining but it doesn't allow you, it doesn't give you what you need to be successful in the aspect of you need a strong foundation when it comes to just having a, a business, a sense of business, how to run a business. Whether you're doing it full-time, part-time, for fun, it doesn't really matter because you need to, there's, there's just some fundamentals, right? You need to know your numbers. You need to know if what you're doing is worth what you're doing. You need to know if you're making a profit, if you're being profitable. You need to understand how to look at that. You need to know how to look at that month to month. You should have at least a basic understanding of a P&L and at least have a basic P&L to look at and, and track your numbers. You, sh if, you should know how to track your products. Know how to see which products are performing for you, which things are working for you. Understand SWOT analysis, right? Um, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Understand if something's not working, when you need to pivot, how you can pivot. Understand business systems, how to work in, in Two Second Lean, really good book, man, if you can find it. Um, there's an audio book of it on, um, I think that's what it's called, yeah, Two Second Lean. How to make your systems more efficient, right? Just a little bit at a time. You know, compound effect. It's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of material, but a lot of that stuff I was already doing, but I might not have had the book to like, you know how you'd be doing something, but maybe you read something or you listen to somebody and they kind of like bring it into perspective for you. So now you can put like, it's almost like when you meet somebody, you can put a name to the face, that type of thing, right? And so when you watch my videos or you listen to my videos, that's what kind of, that's the information I'll put out there because I feel like, yeah, an unboxing video is entertaining. A sourcing video is entertaining. Yeah, it's good to see somebody go out there and, oh, okay, that, that thing is profitable. But at some point, that thing probably won't be profitable. So that's not going to really help you long term, right? Bolo videos. Yeah, that's okay. That's profitable now. But at some point, it probably won't be, especially if it's on something like YouTube. It's not going to be profitable that long. So things like that, those things are not what's going to carry you past the valleys or not past, but that's, those things aren't going to take you through the valleys of this business, of this industry. If you want to make it through those things, you have to have a solid foundation uh, and, and, a, and at least a basic understanding of, of certain business principles. And so those are the things I try to speak about because I want you to understand that. And so if this is why you should at least consider some of the things I'm saying, because I've done things like this at a very high level. And I'm and I've been able to take that and translate it into this business of reselling and make it successful. And I'm going to take even this even further in the future, you know, as I kind of like envision where I want to go with this and how I want to use this as a stepping stone to just try to reach some other goals and things like that. So for you, Mr. Commenter. Who asked the question, why should you listen to me? You don't got to listen to me. You really don't. But you should. 
if you really want to learn something. And I feel the same way when I listen to everybody else. It's because even if I don't agree with everything they say, which I won't, which you won't agree with everything I say, and that's OK. But I'll pick up a little bit of something. And if I knew a person had 10 years of uh, experience in any industry that they were successful in uh, business wise, there would be something there for me to learn, even if it's not related to what I'm doing. There's something there for, for me to learn, right? Whether it's leadership, whether it's a little bit of, of systems, wh whatever it might be, um, how to understand my numbers, how to read a P&L, whatever it might be, there's probably something there. And so, yeah, I'll listen and I'll see if there's something there for me that, that I can glean and take away. And I feel like if I can, that was valuable. And I'll give that person another shot when they come up with something else or when they come out with some more content, because I feel like, OK, I got something out of that. It wasn't just this one thing. It's like, a, um, <laughs> all right, this might be a bad example, but it's like a crack high. <laughs> now, I never smoked crack. I did crack. Right. But I do know people that have. Um, and so I know. <laughs> Crack highs don't last that long. <laughs> That's why they got to keep smoking it, right? Crack high, you be high, they'd be high for a good 20 minutes. And then it's gone and they got to get some more, right? I know a few people like that, unfortunately. Some of them got out of it, some didn't. But um, it's like a crack high, man. I feel like a lot of these people chasing these videos, yeah, you get your little <clears throat> adrenaline fix. You see, you see the bolos and the unboxing videos. And then that's it. And then what? And now if you in it just because for the entertainment reasons, reasons and you just like watching those type of videos, that's all fine and dandy. Right. I ain't even talking about that. However, if you want to be successful, you got to realize that that's exactly what this is. That's just that's just candy. That's all it is. All right. Maybe I should have used that example instead of the crack high. Right. <laughs> it's a sugar high. <laughs> right. You get the sugar high. It goes up and you come crashing down. <clears throat> It's not going to carry you through. Even if you're doing this part time as a side hustle, the goal, the key is to be successful at it. To, and, and if it's part time, you really need to maximize that time and get as much as you can. So you really need to be focusing in on how to get the most out of the time that you're putting in. How do you do that? And I can guarantee you this. Chasing bolo videos ain't it. OK, watching unboxing videos ain't it. That's how you do it. You need some basic fundamentals that you can take and build on. And then, yeah, you kind of maybe throw in those videos because maybe you can pick up something here and there that you can see and you can get. And maybe you can make a couple extra dollars to add. But you need like bread and butter stuff. You need to understand like also what you need is like a bigger perspective, a wider perspective of if everybody is looking over here at this one thing or in this certain area, maybe I don't want to go that way. Maybe I don't want to go that way because I can see right now it's going to be oversaturated. You're going to have a lot of price tanking. So you need to understand how to source other products. And then how do you go about that? How do you know if an item is profitable? There's a lot that goes into it and it's not really difficult, but it does require a little bit of work on your part. You know, like for me, I was just thinking recently, you know, thinking about my reselling business and just trying to like it feel like where where I might want to branch out to to hedge against some of the things that might be coming down the pipe. And one of the areas I was thinking about was just pets, right? How many videos do you see on YouTube about people sourcing pet supplies? Yeah, you might see like a uh, Amazon video or something where they'll throw in like this item does well and this. Is, but I mean, building a business around pet supplies. So for me, it starts with, OK, let me start now. The idea is there. Right. So now it's like, let me start research. I don't want to get in. A, number one, I don't like selling clothes. If there was a worst case scenario where I, I had to and that's what I had to do to survive my, my business, then. I don't know, I might go get another job, honestly, <laughs> I, I just hate selling clothes, man. I hate selling clothes. But no, if I had to do it, I probably would. But I, I can't go back working for somebody else at this point. I just couldn't do it, man. Um. Well, it just depends on the situation. I ain't going to say that. It would depend on the situation. Um, but I hate selling clothes. Also, clothes is the most oversaturated area, man, that I can think of when it comes to reselling because everybody can get it. So you say, OK, there's got to be other profitable niches. What is, what, what is one? Pets. How many how many Americans got pets? Right. 
millions and millions and millions. So, the, you know, and it starts with that thought and then you research the industry, you see, and then you kind of niche down because you don't probably want to try everything because there's just way too many types of pets out there that people got. You want to probably focus on an area that might be the most profitable and maybe not even the most profitable necessarily, right? Because I can see going into a niche that might be maybe a little uh, more obscure, you know? Let's just say pet worms. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody out there got a pet worm. I'm almost certain, right? But how many people probably think about pet worm? And what does it take to raise a pet worm? I don't know. People probably got to buy some stuff if they got a pet worm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. But that's just an example of something that would be so specific, so specific that you wouldn't have that many people selling in that area. And if you can find out who does it, where they get the stuff from, that they sell it and kind of like slide your way in there. That might be something that works. Right. And so those are the things you should kind of be thinking. And that's the type of content that I want to put out there. Like right? I'm, I'm, I'm saying all that to say that is that those are the types of things. Yeah, I might throw in stuff where I'll show you some of the inventory I get. I was even thinking about like ordering some mystery boxes or doing stuff like that for entertainment purposes only. But that is not what I want to build my channel around. If you want to know like the type of content you'll get from me, it's going to be educational, foundational type of information that you can use to grow a real business full time, part time. You can be profitable. And my experience comes from running million dollar restaurants, dealing with staff and customers and all types of stuff, man, all types of stuff for a very long time and translating that over to what I'm doing now and making that happen all while I do have a wife and I do have nine children. So our family's pretty big. Yes. I said nine children, like one, two, three, four, nine, nine. Um, so we got a lot of kids, man. So it's not easy. And I couldn't do it without her anyway. Like she, she, she holds it down, you know, she holds it down, man. But, um, that is why I feel like you should at least give this channel a chance. And like I said, you don't got to agree with everything. And I would like to hear information from you. You know, I would like to have discourse about certain things and, and share what works, what doesn't work. Eventually, I'm going to start doing some lives and hopefully we can kind of kick around that type of information. And I want to start having other people on to share that information because information is what makes you the money. Education. It's not really the product. You can have a person who takes a product that sells really well for a decent profit and they can destroy the profitability of that item because they have no idea what they're doing. Total, and you see it every day on eBay and Amazon. Every day people come and take a really good solid profit and totally kill the profitability of it because they have no idea what they're doing. They have no, they have no business calling themselves resellers, business people having a business. If they're not going to fix that and look for solutions other than like, there's just no reason for that. And so that's not, that's not what I want for you. That's not what I'm going to have for myself. So if you want to learn not only about like reselling and things like just business in general, cause maybe you want to use reselling as a stepping stone. Maybe reselling is not something you want to see yourself doing, you know, five, 10 years down the line, but maybe you're saying to yourself, okay, you know what? I want to build up some capital and then I want to take that capital. Well, these principles and these things, you can, these, they translate over to different areas. It's not just reselling. The things you learn in reselling, inventory management, how to read your P and L's, how to, how to understand and read and, and, and track profitable SKUs, customer service, S systems, right? Systems, how to systematize your business, efficiency, all of this stuff, all of this stuff, how to, if you get employees, how to manage employees, like there's a lot that goes into it, but these skills, this skill set translates over into something else. If you want to start getting into real estate, you want to start getting into who knows what, right? There's all types of options out there, but it's those fundamentals that will help you be more successful in the long term. We're not thinking short term here. We're thinking long term. Things that'll help you be successful in the long term. And so that the things that helped me be successful in the past and it's helping me be successful right now, those are the things that I want to impart to each and every last one of my viewers. 
And those are things that came from that restaurant industry, man. Every like I can't like there's things there that I'm so appreciative for. Even though I hated it some days, hated it. I'm so appreciative for the opportunities, but because it taught me things that honestly I wouldn't have even learned in school. You know, because it's real world experience. And so I just want to share some of that real world experience with y'all. So you'll hear me talk about these things, these business principles and just how to apply those to your reselling business so that you can be as successful as you possibly can. All right. So Mr. Commoner, that's why you should listen to me or not. Whatever. Do me a favor, though. Tell me what you think in the comments. Share some of your experiences in the comments below. Um, how did you get into reselling? Were you um, into, were you in a different type of business before or was you just like an employee? Did you just come from a different job or was you like a manager? What's going on with that? Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you all guys want to hear uh, certain types of content, please comment in the comments below and I'll, and I'll definitely work on that for y'all. All right. But for now, I'm out.